Hello everyone, welcome back to the Professor Oaks Challenge. Like I said in the Alpha Sapphire Challenge video, that I would be doing Pokemon Coliseum and XD before I was able to handle Heart Gold in its entirety. Fortunately, that doesn't seem to be changing, and I cannot wait to exclaim how bad the Safari Zone is in the Gen 2 remakes. But that's not what we're here to talk about. This is about Pokemon Coliseum. Now you may be asking, Sean, wait a second, how are you going to do that? Where's the gym leaders? Well, your answer is, is that there is no gym leaders. But there are major bosses, such as Cypher Admin, so I'll be using those matches as my guideposts rather than gyms. Lastly, I'll be purifying every single Shadow Pokemon before each section ends, since without doing that, there would be a severe lack of grinding that really makes these not even seem like Professor Oak challenge videos. Well then, on with the challenge! First things first, I name myself Chaotic, as I always do in pre-generation 6 games, and we see a pre-rendered cutscene of me blowing up Team Snagum's hideout, snagging the snag machine on the way out. Snag. What a weird word. I travel to the outskirts stand and get interrupted by these two goons, Trudley and Folly. They're not important right now, but I immediately talk to this pink-haired guy inside named Willie, who initiates a battle with me once I leave the stand. In case you're not familiar with Pokemon Coliseum or XD, these games take place in the RA region, which only uses double battles for the story mode. I love these since there's a lot more challenge and strategy to them, but I still take out his joke Zigzagoons with my starters Espeon and Umbreon, adding them to the total immediately. I'm doing this now since I don't really get a traditional Pokedex in this game, so I'll need to keep up with them myself. And to anyone who doesn't like the dinging sound for the deck's total updating, I'm using a shorter ding so that it doesn't bother as many people. Thanks for bringing it up in the comments. From here, I'm able to go to Phoenix City and rescue a girl in a body bag. No, seriously, she's in a body bag. I had to battle Folly in order to scare them off. Who knows what they would have done to her if I hadn't come in at that exact moment. What if I had taken two extra turns taking down Willy's Zigzagoons? She would have been toast. I give her the default name of Rui, and she advised me to head to the mayor's house, leading me to Nascor, the co-head of Cypher. We'll be battling him at the end of the game, but he definitely feels daunting when you encounter him this early on. After talking to the mayor, I headed to the Coliseum as he told me to, since that would be a wise idea, only to see that I'm unable to take the challenge. How useless. I try to leave, but I get ambushed by Team Snagum Grunts, so I battle one of them and scare them off. And here is where Rui tells us where we should try to get some Pokeballs. So I travel to the Pokemart to buy Pokeballs, but wait, there's no wild Pokemon in this region. That means they don't have any. So I have to arbitrarily go back to Outsert Scanned and buy some Pokeballs and Great Balls before going back to Phoenix City. Heading back to the mayor's house, more suspicious people including Dreadly and Folly are here, including the best character to make it from this subseries, Mirror B. Here I have to fight both Folly and Trudley, and this is where Rui comes in. She's your Shadow Pokemon Detector. That's it. She has almost no other point of existing other than her grandfather in a gate village. We're able to snag Makahita from Trudley, adding another to the total. I move Makahita in place of Umbreon in order to start degrading the Heart Gauge, and tried leaving Phoenix City, leaving me to fight either Verde, Rosso, or Bluno. I chose Bluno since this is a choice of Johto starters and Totodile is the earliest evolution we can get. Seeing as we can snag a Croconaw at level 30 and we'll only need one level to get it to Feraligator later on. Defeating him makes the other two run off until the post game, allowing us to go to the construction lot and immediately turn around to go to Pyrite time for no apparent reason. There's quite a few Shadow Pokemon we can snag here, those being Mischievous from Rider Vant, Slugma from Roller Boy Lawn, Quagsire from Bandana Guy Dival, Skiploon from Rider Leba, Flaffy from Performer Diogo, and Noctowl from Rider Nover, adding six Pokemon to the total. From here, I'm able to talk to this guy at the Pyrite Coliseum who tells me that a guy named Kale has a Shadow Pokemon, so I went after him and well as snagged his turret within minutes, adding yet another to the total. He tells us after the battle that we need to infiltrate Mirrors B's hideout, and from here I went to Duke King's place and moved his bookcase in order to talk with the kids. But when I came out, that's what mattered. That really came out weird. Silva complains to Duking for letting Mirror B take a hold of the Coliseum and steals a gear from the windmill in order to prevent the Coliseum from running. This is where the construction lock comes in, seeing as we're able to get a large gear that he hid here. That's it. We're never coming back here again. Literally, there's no reason for this area to exist. 
I return the gear, and that allows me to gain access to the Pyrite Coliseum, which I take down with no problems so that I can then gain access to Mirror B's hideout here in Pyrite. Boy, there's a lot of going around and fetching things, isn't there? There's actually yet another chunk of Shadow Pokemon here in the hideout. There's Yanma from Cypher Peon Nor. But before I got any more, actually, I did a whole bunch of just walking to get the heart gauges from my currently captured Shadow Pokemon down to zero. Afterwards, I snagged Remoraid from Mirror B Peon Wreath, Mantine from Mirror B Peon Firma, Quillfish from Hunter Doken, Meditite from Rider Twan. Twan makes a return. Route Twan is now Rider Twan. Dunsparce from Rider Sosh, and Swablu from Hunter Zalo. If I go any farther, I'll have to fight Mirror B, who's actually a Cypher admin. However, I can't physically purify any Pokemon yet until I get a bit farther in the game. So I decided to just deplete every Pokemon's heart gauge within about two hours and fought Mirror B, snagging Yasudowoto in the process. After beating Mirror B, I'm able to rescue Duking's Plusel, who decides that it wants to go on an adventure with me. How cute! Get in the PC, you piece of sh! You don't even have a mind, and to be good with it, double battles, brother! From here, Fatine the Fortune Teller tells us that there's trouble up north, which lies a gate village, the place where Rui's grandparents live. We go there and meet them, hearing that there's some goons over in the Relic Forest. And this is actually where we get to purify Shadow Pokemon, but unfortunately, we'll have to take care of these goons and this scrub first. Wait a second. His name's actually Scrub? This doofus is named Scrub, and he doesn't even realize he's in for the booty kicking of his life. So I proceed with the booty kicking and snag his Hitmontop, adding another to our total. After scaring them off, I'm able to purify my Remoride, Slugma, Quillfish, Metatite, Quagsire, Noctowl, Furret, Dunsparce, Yanma, Mistrevis, Mantine, Flaffy, who evolved into Ampharos after one level, Crocona, who also evolved into Feraligator in one level, Makahita, who evolved into Hariyama after one level, and Skiploom. Skiploom will be evolved later in a little bit, but from here, I'm told to go to Mount Battle to take care of some more Cypher shenanigans. Oh boy. From here, I took out the first nine battles of Mount Battle, seeing as if I went any farther, I would have to fight the next Cypher admin, so we don't want to go any farther just yet. After Battle 7, I was able to evolve Skiploom into Jumpluff in one level, and Remoraid into Octillery at level 25. From here, I was able to purify Swablu and Hitmontop, which allowed me to grind in the Phenac Coliseum through a few leaps to evolve Metatitan and Metacham at level 37, Swablu into Altaria at level 35, and Slugma into Mecargo at level 38. After that, I purified Sudowoodo, leaving me to fight the next Cypher admin, Dokim. He actually has the first legendary that we need to snag during our adventure, that being Entei. Which somehow goes in after only one Ultra Ball. Sick. After Dockham is defeated, he drops an F-Disc which we'll be using in the next area, as well as a Time Flute that we get from Vander, which I'll be saving for the time being, as it allows you to purify a Shadow Pokemon without the need to deplete their Heart Gauge. After this, we've got a pretty short section with only two snags. I traveled back to Pyrite Town so I could nab the Jail Key from the Town Jail, and I went back to Duking so that I could be sent off on another arbitrary quest back to Agape Village to talk to Egan, and then go back to Pyrite Town to grab the Elevator Key from the Mirror B peons I fought earlier inside of the same Jail Cell, so that I could get into the next area, the Under. What an original name. Anyway, as soon as I got down into the Under, the next admin, Venus, broadcasted through the TV setup in the town that there were spies in the base. I went through a few of the buildings to talk to this kid to grab the power-up part, which I delivered to the kids in the city, enabling us to see Silva get tossed into a cell by some peons, who I decided I wanted to beat them up, so I did, snagging a Shadow Lady in from Cloak and the Whipping. I swear I'm not trapping to be smug during this episode, but I really can't explain how repetitive this game is. From here, Silva is able to toss us the R disc through the cage while he's handcuffed, but before I go fight Venus, I've got to purify Entei and Ladian. I purchased some energy roops as cheap hyper potions, and then went to Outskirts Stand to purchase some net balls and ultra balls, and did a bunch of walking around in order to purify Ladian, and then I used a time flute on Entei in order to get things moving. Going back to the under, I used the R disc to get to Venus, taking her down relatively quickly and snagging her Suicune in one net ball. Boy, these are giving me a lot less trouble than they did in Heart Gold. She runs off to the subway through an elevator, whereas I have to go the long way, taking down a few trainers that had some shadow Pokemon. Stanging Gligar from Hunter Freyna, Stantler from Chaser Leix, 
Pyloswine from Bodybuilder Lonia, and Sneasel from Nider Nellis. Before we move on, I'd like to comment on something. What the f are these names? We started with a decent name like Willy, and it's all been going downhill since then. I mean, what the heck is a Leix? <sighs> but I digress. I went back onto Pyrite Town and did more walking around so I could purify Sneasel, Suicune, Stantler, Pyloswine, and Glygar. After that, I finally pursued Venus after she would have been able to escape a hundred times over and chase her to the Shadow Pokemon Lab, which is full of battles. And Time Sync. Boy do these animations take forever, and I have no idea why there's no option to turn them off since there are in every single handheld Pokemon game. I'm able to get the subway key, and I take the train to the Shadow Pokemon Lab, so let's just go on in and... Wow, that's overdoing it. For some reason, the main gate key landed on our side of the explosion, so I was able to leave and come back through the proper entrance for any proper human being. Through the front door. There's a whole bunch of peons and trainers in here, so there's a number of Shadow Pokemon to snag before I fight the next admin. We've got Apom from Peon Cole. Wait, Cole? That's an actual name! Success! I snag Foratris from Peon Vanna, Murkrow from Peon Lair, Ariados from Peon Lesnar, I mean, Lazar. I wonder which one is worse. Lastly, I snagged Gramble from Peon Tanny and Vibrava from Peon Remel, adding six Pokemon to the total. After about two or so hours of walking around, I was able to purify all six of them and evolve Vibrava into Flygon at level 45 with two rare candies I got from the room I fought Venus in. And here, we're able to fight the scientist behind the Shadow Pokemon phenomenon, Ein. He's got the last of Johto's legendary beasts in Raikou, which I managed to snag in a few Ultra Balls. Glad it didn't actually give me that much struggle. This trio actually has been nice to me during this game. We're actually already pretty close to the end of the story here. I picked up the data ROM and delivered it to Net in the Under, which he attempts to restore after Ein deleted the files from it. And this actually makes some really good sense, seeing as you don't actually delete files off of a drive. They actually stay there until they're overwritten and can be recovered through specific software. Good job, genius sonority. I know that you guys are underappreciated as developers, so I give you props. After leaving the under, I'm able to snag two more shadow Pokemon when I arrive in Ryugum Tower, the final area of the main game. We've got Sunflora from Peon Bela and Delibird from Peon Arten. I've also got some rematches with all four Cypher admins, but I don't count these as a barrier progression since they're just rematches, and there's a better gate just slightly further than this. So I take down Venus and Ein, but wait, I got a message from Egan that got cut off? So I traveled back to his place in Agate Village and received a Master Ball. I will for sure be using this later, especially at my low level for this area in the game. Going back to Rilgum Tower, I take out Mirror B and dock him, taking all four of their keys to move on to the next section of the tower. Or I would if it wasn't for this dude. In exchange for him getting in my way, I snag his shadow hair across and get on my way for the next area. Since we're going to have to be taking on the next boss here soon, I decided to purify my current shadow Pokemon. Those being Sunflora, Delibird, Heracross, and using my other time flute that I got in the under, I used it on Raikou so that I could get a move on. Back in Rilgum Tower, we see that Team Snagum leader Gonzap in the tower is a bit salty and says that they've been snagging Pokemon from around the region in order to convert them with Shadow Pokemon with Cypher. Fortunately, I'm able to put a stop to him taking a Shadow Skarmory from his clutches. Before I went anywhere, I went to purify Skarmory. Why? Because once you go any farther, you ain't going back until you beat the final boss, or get beaten yourself. So from here, there's a string of six battles that you have to take down. The first four without healing. Each of these battles have Shadow Pokemon. Miltank from Bodybuilder Jomas, Absol from Rider Delon, Houndoom from Peon Nella, Tropius from Peon Stun, and then moving on to the final bosses, Metagross from Nascor, and Tyranitar from the Phoenix City Mayor Escod, revealed to be Cypherhead Evis. I use the Master Ball here since Tyranitar has the lowest catch rate since I've gotten the Master Ball, so I decided to just use it here since I really don't have many more to snag. Also, I saw this twist coming since the beginning of the game when I saw both Nascor and Mirror B in his house. Why else would they be there? Anyway, after Evis tries to escape, ho comes out of nowhere and blows up his escape helicopter just for us to have a happy ending. But the game doesn't actually end here. Oh no, it doesn't. 
After coming back from the credits, we get an email from Ned about more Shadow Pokemon popping up. Going back to Pyrite, I'm able to talk to one of the kids behind Duking's bookcase and fight Kale again so he tells me where the next Shadow Pokemon is located. However, since I almost had my bum whooped during the gauntlet towards the final boss, I decided to do a few hours of grinding to get my team to level 60, including purifying my Metagross and Tyranitar so that I could have some better power on my team, as well as reduce the amount of grinding I'll have to do later. I also just purified Meal Tank, Tropius, Houndoom, and Absol while I was here just so I wouldn't have to do it later. I'm finally able to go to the Snagum hideout after about 10 hours, flying through everything in order to find one of the Power Ranger knockoffs from the beginning of the game, Faraday. He has a Bayleaf, which I snag with ease due to it still being level 30. I returned to the outskirts stand, giving me a new lead on the third of the Ranger knockoffs. I went back to the Ender, talking to Net, who tells me to ask Gurks if he saw a Shadow Pokemon. And of course, he wants a fight. Gurks wants a nice fight. After wailing on his Waylords, oh, what? Wow, that really wasn't on purpose. I put that in the script without even thinking about it. Ugh. Anyway, I take him down and I'm told to go back to the Shadow Pokemon Lab to find Rosso, who has a Shadow Quilava that is easily snagged. From here, I purified Bayleaf and Quilava, allowing me to grind them up in the Snagum hideout during my pursuit for some more Shadow Pokemon, those being Smurgle and Ursaring, both of which I snag. These battles allow me to evolve Quilava into Typhlosion at level 36, and Bayleaf into Meganium at level 32. And now is why I did that grinding earlier. I get to rematch Gonzap in this hideout, and after that I get the D-Disc to go to the Deep Coliseum underneath the Under. The Under Under. No, it's not called that. I have to go through 20 battles here, including more rematches with all four Cypher admins, eventually allowing me to fight the Deep King, Agnol, who has a Shadow Shuckle, leaving me with only one more Pokemon to snag. I was able to purify Ursaring, Smeargle, and Shuckle, and then went on to the last big fetch quest. Apparently there's Copycat that decided to attack people with a shiny Togetic, attacking three different areas before I was able to fight him, taking out his fairly difficult team and snagging the 48th and final Shadow Pokemon of the game. After purifying it in short order, I only have one responsibility left to take down. Mount Battle, specifically the battle mode from the main menu. This doesn't take place in the main save file, but I have to go through a hundred long, grueling battles with my team in story mode. Though I was able to do single battles, so most of them were able to go down with Tyranitar's Earthquake, seeing as I was able to get that and Metagross to level 70 after the crazy amount of battles during the post game. It was actually pretty easy too, seeing as most of them weren't fully evolved. Oh god, there's legendaries here! And quite a few too! Jirachi wasn't too hard to take down, but wow, they sent out a Groudon at battle 80! Oh my god, I'm glad that Primal Groudon wasn't a thing till Generation 6 or else I would have been totally destroyed. Regice, Registeel, Entei, the list goes on. I had a bit of a scare during the last few battles as well, but luckily I didn't need one continue at all. After getting to the top and taking down the final Kyogre and the Battlemaster, I claim Ho-Oh, being delivered straight to my box, giving me the 63rd and final obtainable Pokemon in Pokemon Coliseum. And before that one person says anything, no, I'm not playing the Japanese version. I am unable to get the Shadow Togepi, Mareep, or Scizor from the Eater Eater accessories, and I'm really happy I didn't since holy moly that is a lot of money. Overall, this challenge was surprisingly long for the small amount of Pokemon that we had here, taking me about 48 hours, 42 and a half in the story mode and 5 and a half in Mount Battle. I also really wanted to replay this game and this challenge was a great excuse to do so, However, it really made me realize the amount of flaws that there were just caused by making the evil team as the main plot point during the entire story, leading me to believe that Pokemon really wasn't ready for the complex stories that they tried here. Wait a few generations until we get to Sun and Moon, they're at least done more competently there. Hopefully, as a console game, XD is actually better since next time, this will actually be my first time playing through XD, so it'll probably be a few weeks before I finish it, due to my lack of experience, so please be patient, it's coming, along with Heart Gold. I'm about a month away from being able to continue catching and going along through the Sakanta region thanks to the Safari Zone, 
And I can't wait to get that video to you, because it's probably going to be the longest video I ever do. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, check out this playlist of Professor Oak's challenges that I've done so far. You'll probably enjoy them too. And if you really enjoyed it, I've got a playlist of my all-inclusive Mega Man marathon that I'm currently working on and will be working on for quite some time. Now if you super duper enjoyed it, I've got some other links for my Twitter, Discord, Twitch, and Patreon. Please check them out if you feel inclined, and I'll see you guys on Wednesday for Mega Man 5.